Hello everyone, this is AJ and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new review, that being for the new 2022 version of Firestarter. Let's talk about this film, find out if it's hot or not. Okay, yeah, so Firestarter's just come out, um, a remake of the 1984 classic based on the Stephen King novel. Um, yeah, Blumhouse have produced this film, and I've watched it, so what do I think of it? That's the question. Now, the 1984 original, um, starring Drew Barrymore as a young girl, um, I've not seen for many, many a year. Um, so much so I cannot remember it whatsoever. Um, I find this film to be very interchangeable with Carrie. So much so that I saw this, when, when they announced this, I was like, didn't they remake this a few years ago? That was Carrie. Um, very sort of similar film, but no, this is Firestarter. So this is a 15 rated film with a runtime of one hour and 34 minutes, starring Zac Efron as Andy McGee, Ryan Kira as Ryan Kira Armstrong as Charlie McGee, the young girl in the piece, Sidney Lemon as Vicky McGee, mother, um, Michael Greyeyes as Rainbird, and a wealth of other actors that you will probably recognize in character roles from other things i certainly did um the film is directed by keith thomas um on a screenplay by scott themes obviously based upon the novel by stephen king now um the story is based around these two parents who have been tested on some years before that we catch up with them and they've got a young daughter um, uh, they were part of an experimentation all this sort of thing and their young daughter she has the ability well when she gets angry or upset she causes things to burst into flames essentially she's pyrokinetic she can cause things to set fire um, and she can't control this um, this this power it, it comes to her in these states of dismay upset anger this sort of thing um she's at school she's getting bullied it causes it to kick off and this sort of thing so she's upset with her life as well because there's no mobile phones in her life there's no internet so lastly she's picked on at school and this sort of thing because she's not living the life that other children are and this bothers her she doesn't realize that her and her parents are actually on the run and being chased by individuals from this this scientific research place that that, that birthed them so to speak for want of a better term only it comes to a head when things happen at school um uh, troubles caused it's all looked into uh, um this sort of cherokee kind of a fella um native american um, played by michael gray eyes um as the character rainbird comes after him kills the mother um and, and a sort of chase ensues um zach efron is caught the father he's caught he's taken back to the facility the little girl then decides that she wants to go and rescue him and she she goes in to rescue him um, she believes that he's called to her because he's got powers of his own, which are sort of telekinesis and this sort of a thing. Um, uh, yeah, and, and and so the film goes on like that. Um, I'll be honest here, I fell asleep during the middle of this film. Um, Centre section, it, it done nothing for me. Um, Zac Efron as an actor, um, I don't particularly enjoy to be honest but so much so i mean anyone could have been in that role within this film um ryan kira armstrong i thought thought she was quite good as the little girl i thought she was as quite strong um had quite strong acting talent within it she's probably the strongest part of the film she was pretty good um, the problem is is this sort of a film relies more on concept than character and, and I like character and, and although there is growth for the young girl throughout 
the the film and I did like her character growth bear in mind like the middle of her sleep um, she is a different character by the end of the film a different person than what she is at the beginning of the film she comes to learn to use her powers um, so much so that it grows beyond the pyrokinetic into the telekinesis as well and this is where those mirroring comes into play with Carrie and why I get the two kind of mixed up um, but yeah so but but in this film she's not malicious the girl's not malicious or anything like this although she could easily be driven that way uh, and by the very end of the film um, she she kind of forgives Rainbird because he's been used by the facility um, to hunt down and this sort of a thing. Um, and he kind of saves her at the end and takes her away at the end. So she's going to be like an adoptive father for him, essentially. So by the end, she is forgiving of him of what he's done. Um, but at the same time, she's opening herself up to be taught and raised and directed properly with her powers. Um, I like that sort of concept um, uh, and that growth within the character. Um, now the film, it, 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 it's obviously, a, I don't want to say it's a cheap film, it's not a cheap film in that sense, but these films are quite low budget to make, hence why Blumhouse get the, get away with making them and, and, and they, they have sort of cornered the market of the sort of horror movie remakes because horror movies have a big return on a small budget and, and that budget is kind of felt here you've got flame effects and this sort of thing which is all very good um and 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 yeah so the film does look pretty good and from the young girl's perspective acted pretty well as well soundtrack for the film is actually done by john carpenter well john carpenter along with Cody Carpenter, John's son, um, and Daniel A. Davies. They they have done the soundtrack for this film. And the John Carpenter stuff shows, or it hears, I should say, because it has a very John Carpenter-esh feel to it. Um, John, Car John Carpenter was meant to direct the original um, Firestarter movie. However, after the thing um, failed at the box office, which has obviously gone on to become a cult classic, um, he was dropped as the director and replaced but here he is doing the musical score for the film and if you've got an ear for music you can tell that it is John Carpenter because he's got a very distinctive style in what he does um so that, that's very good now I had a few issues with the narrative of the film things that I had to question um if these two parents are on the run with this child then why are you sending her to school why are you sending her to a school with knowing that she's got this ability that she can do this and it's not really in con she's not in control of it so why would you put her into that situation um that that bit kind of got me at the end of the film there's scenes where in in the in the facility that she's going through and she's wiping people out essentially um that, that she comes across people in, in flame retardant suits, big sort of silver suits, uh, and her flames can't penetrate them. But yet the film's already shown us her developing these um, kinetic abilities and powers. Um, why wouldn't she attempt to use some of them on these people at this point? Um, you know, she's, she's shown to have the ability to have two people point their guns at one another. Um, which is what her father has the ability to do. She's she's learnt that. So why are these people a threat to her in that sense? Um, yeah, and also I didn't like the elements with Zac Efron. That every time he has to use his power, he sort of goes and cracks his neck. Um, uh, uh, that just seemed a bit silly to me. But I'm picking here. I'm pick that really is picking. That's me picking. Um, so unfortunately, I fell asleep. I was very tired. Um, uh, I just half of the course but um the film at the beginning was sluggish uh, but i can tell you that the last act was pretty damn good um but i don't know if that's enough to save the film the rest of the film beyond beyond um ryan kira armstrong's acting uh, the film is very middle of the table um it, I, I i you know don't get me wrong i didn't just fall asleep for that long to know not what was going on, I sort of think I was sort of in and out, um, and I don't know, yeah, I think the film was boring me, um, but yeah, but I made it to the end, um, 
it's one of those films that I'd say to people, you've got to make your own mind up on. Um, I can't tell you it's, it's, it's a good film. I can't tell you it's a bad film. Um, I can tell you it's a very uninspiring film. Um, but beyond that, it is what it is. Anyway, that was it. Just a quick talk about Firestar 2022. This is AJ. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one, Alter. And take care. Goodbye. <laughs>